Okay, we're on to challenge number six in learning Inkscape for creating SVG files for use in design space. So in this one, we're going to learn a couple of new tools, and we're going to begin by going to File, Document Properties, and we'll uncheck this box that says Show Page Border, and close that. That gets rid of that page border that uh, kind of annoys me, as you might have heard in previous videos. And next, we're going to click on our Circle tool, and uh, down here on the color bar, we're going to select orange. And up here on the top right, you should see fill uh, is orange and stroke is set as none. And we're going to just draw uh, a, kind of an ellipse, not too flat, but not too round of a circle. Uh, previously, you heard me say to hold control shift to draw a circle, but we're not wanting a symmetrical circle. So this one's a little bit flattened. And we're going to go with the object selector, we're going to go path object to path and now we're going to use our node editor tool and the node editor tool is up here on the top left right into the selection tool and with the node editor we're going to add nodes to this object and so what we're going to do is come over here and right about the halfway point we're going to get right on the edge of the line and again the object must be selected so you can see your nodes and we're going to get right about the halfway point and double click and that'll add a node we're going to drag that out just a little to give it a little bit more squared look to it. And we'll come over here in about the same place and double click and add a node and drag it up just a little bit. Same thing at the bottom right and same thing at the bottom left. And now we have a little bit more squared off. Uh, circle looks a little bit more like the shape of a pumpkin. So now we're going to learn the next tool, which is the Bezier tool. The Bezier tool will allow us to draw lines in segments. And so when we click the Bezier tool, which is this little pen over here, up at the top you want to make sure it's on this button that says Create Regular Bezier Path. And we're going to zoom in a little bit on this. And it'll be a little bit hard to see on this, but when I click and let off, I click one time and let off and drag my mouse to the right, Again, I'm not holding the mouse button down. I'm just clicked one time to anchor a node, and then I'm going to drag it to the right, and I'm going to click one more time, and then I'm going to drag it up here and click and drag it down here. And my closing uh, click is going to be right over top of that node. If when I put my cursor right over top of it, you'll see that it turns red. And so with it right over top of that node, I'm going to click, and that will close the path for me. And I know there's just different ways to do this, and we're doing this to learn, so uh, hopefully no one will uh, give me any criticisms for making sh basic shapes with a drawing tool rather than just making the shape. And we're going to do another triangle down here. Again, we click, 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 and close the path. You want to make sure you're on that last node when you click so that it closes the path. So now we've drawn three triangles for the uh, eyes and the nose. Now for the mouth, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw it with straight lines initially. And so we'll click there, and we're just going to kind of curve them around a little bit. We'll go up and add a tooth in here. And I want you to put a couple clicks between each segment. And we'll show you why we're doing that in just a moment. We're going to put a tooth in here, and these don't need to be perfect. You can do these however you see fit. And now, as you will see when I zoom in, our mouth is made out of straight lines, so you see these kind of hard segments. And so we're going to go to our node editor tool. We're going to make a few adjustments here. I made this a little bit narrow, so we're going to drag these up. And actually, I meant to put a tooth in here on this side. So I'm going to double click there. Then I'm going to drag this one up here. We'll double click, whoops, and drag that down a little bit. We'll insert a node here and one here by double-clicking. Drag them down just a little bit. We'll drag this one to curve it a little. 
making some minor adjustments here. And now if I click off of it again, you'll see that we have those straight line segments in here. And the way we're going to get rid of those is we're going to hold the control key and click once on the ones that are between these points. So the ones that are on corners, I don't want to touch. So these I'm not going to do anything with. But the ones that are in between, I am. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to click on them one time. And you'll see that it curves, gives it a nice curve as I go around and do this. Oops, missed that one. Again, I'm holding control and clicking on these points that are between the corners. And now if I click here, and it looks like I have a little bit of a uh, jagged corner down here. So I'm going to use my magnification tool and zoom in on that. And sure enough, I do. So I want to grab my node editor tool and uh, just kind of drag that line up a little bit and get rid of that. That was an accidental curve. And so once you have your lines, you can grab these and drag them around and kind of change your shapes as you see fit. And you can also, uh, if you hold control and click on these nodes, each time you click, you'll get different types of nodes, and they will do different things. So uh, some nodes will anchor the point uh, when you're adjusting nodes beside of it. Some of them will give you little handles that you can create curves with, and we'll get more into that in a later video. But now we have the face of the pumpkin, and or the jack-o'-lantern, rather. So we'll select all those, move it over in the middle a little better, maybe center the mouth a little better. And now we're going to use the fill tool. So with nothing selected, again, we want to click off to the side, make sure nothing's selected. I'm going to grab the fill bucket, and I'm going to, want to change it to black. Again, up here at the top right, you'll see my fill is black, and stroke is none. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I like to zoom in on objects as much as I can when I use the fill tool. And the reason is because when I zoom in after I filled, you'll see that there's a little gap between them. It doesn't fill it all the way to the very edge. If you're zoomed way out and filling tiny objects uh, in, it will not uh, fill it as much as what you would like. So we'll zoom in on the mouth and fill it. And we'll zoom back out. Now, when I go back to the selection tool, uh, it's going to select the last filled object that I uh, used the fill bucket for. And then I'm going to hold control, uh, excuse me, I'm going to hold shift and select the other objects. Then I'm going to go to path combine. And that's going to put those together and I can drag them all together now. And now I can select my uh, shapes that I used to fill those in and just delete them and get rid of them. And now we have our jack-o'-lantern face. We need to put a stem up on top. So we're going to grab the square tool. We're going to make it green. So up here at the top right, we'll see green. And we'll just draw a rectangle up here. We'll go path, object to path. Again, everything has to be a path. So you're going to get sick of me saying that in these videos. So you make sure you're converting everything to a path or your uh, SVG may not import correctly into design space. So now that we've converted it to a path, we're going to select our um, node tool. And we're going to double click here double click here. We're going to add nodes here and drag these out to the left and make that stem a little bit crooked and curved. And again we're going to hold control and click on each of these nodes and make it curved instead of a squared node. And now our jack-o'-lantern has a stem. And if I select them all I can group them. And we will save this as a plain SVG file. Now if we flip over to Design Space and we upload the image, we see our preview looks like we would expect. So we'll save it and we'll insert it into our project. And there is our Jack Lantern and over here on the right we see the three layers. And if I click Go, it will ask for the three different colored mats as expect, black, green, and orange. In this video challenge, you learned how to create an ellipse object, and we converted that to a path. Then we added nodes and manually shaped that ellipse just a little bit. And we used the Bezier tool, this is a new tool we've learned, to create straight-lined, free-handed shapes. And so we created 
a shape using straight line segments. Then we use the node editor again to adjust those shapes and smooth the curves around the jack-o'-lantern's mouth and added a tooth after we forgot to add one. We use the fill tool to fill the shapes with color. Then we used combine to make the common shapes one object so that the eyes, the nose, and the mouth of the jack-o'-lantern became one object instead of four separate objects. Then we grouped the objects and we saved them as a plain SVG file and we uh, imported those into design space. So if you were able to complete this challenge successfully, I welcome you to take a screenshot or a picture and post it on Facebook and tag me in your post and I would appreciate it. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.